stereo for Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro. That follows another half hour spent with the Wilkins of Reading in our fly on the wall view of the family. Karen married at the age of 16 Gary Wilkins. She was pregnant at the time. In January 1973, she gave birth to a son, Scott. For Gary, there seemed no alternative but to marry and live with his parents. I would have preferred to have seen Karen have the baby and let Gary support him and still see one another by all means, but wait and see if they were really sure of their feelings for one another. Gary's one of these people, he wants to be the boss. And um, he's not quite grown up enough to know how to go about it. And he tends to um, bully, if you like. You know, he, he, um, he's, he's a man, and yet he's not. Gary has got the old-fashioned idea that the wife is the slave in the house. Um, I'm married to you, now you will do this for me, you will do that for me. Uh, as far as Gary's concerned, he comes home from work and he shouldn't get off his backside then to do anything. Karen is basically more mature than what Gary is because she came from a very large family and she had to look after the youngsters, so to speak. And um, so therefore she had to grow up a bit quicker than he did. Thank you very much. Their only fault is that they're immature and that will come with age and, and time. I mean, it, it's something that... Um, well, I, I don't know, it will come. I mean, this is it's as simple as that. stranger in the house. Um, at meal times, they're out in the kitchen, I'll go sit with them and I'll join in the conversation. Um, if they want to be on their own, I'll come in here and have a little read of something or watch telly. Or else I'll, you know, just go out there and sit there until they tell me they want me to go. I'd like to go out to work, but with a young baby, I don't think I could, uh, I wouldn't like to. Yeah. It's not fair to the child. He left with somebody else, he wouldn't know who she was or he was. And in the end, I wouldn't be called his mother. He'd be, call, he'd be calling the person that's looking after him his mother. I don't want that to happen. My mum and dad were married when I was 18 and 19. His mum and dad was um, 17 and 19. So, I mean, why should I be the odd one out? Why shouldn't I be married yet? I didn't want to get rid of the baby just because I was pregnant. I didn't get married because of him. I made that clear straight from the start. I told Gary I didn't want to get married because of the baby, and he knew that. Anyway, he was going to get married anyway, so I mean, there's not much difference, is there? Where's that baby? Uh, Where's that baby? Uh, Don't say how they use is me. Um, I take it for granted, if Dad's on early, Mum, I take it for granted that I'm going to do the kitchen and what have you for her. I mean, sometimes you say thank you for doing it, sometimes you won't. Which annoys me a bit, as soon as I do it near enough every day, you know. I mean, I don't mind doing it, because I enjoy housework. But I would like to hear a little thank you now and again, you know. Um, if I don't do it, they'll ask why. If I said, oh, I didn't fancy doing it, and being all almighty blow up, you know. When I've done everything, you know, and I've got nowhere to go, I'll just go, I'll go upstairs and sit there and look out the window, see what's happening, you know, see if there's anything interesting. Yes. 
sit there for hours just staring out of a window. You do get lonely now and again, but what else can I do? There are many like Karen, snared in the trap of low wages, inadequate education and early marriage. They have written for council housing, but Karen has still to post the letter. Karen, some friends living near us, his wife used to go down in the morning, and he used to go down in the afternoon, every day then, and they bothered them and bothered them and bothered them. Now, this to me, I think, is a good argument, because I've known loads of people do this, and really get the point home that you're desperate. You really need a place. You can't get Gary Day in that bloody place. He's comfortable. So long as he's got somebody to cook his meals and to do everything for him, he doesn't care two monkeys, does he? No. Let's face it. He doesn't care two monkeys because I'll cook him a bloody meal anyway. No, I know, but that's getting away from the point. I mean, he, he's quite content so long as he's got somebody to look after him, not to worry where he's living, where he's sleeping. Now, you don't want to be stuck in one room. You've said so yourself, obviously. I don't want to stuck in one room. No, thank you. Of course I want you out. I want to get on with living my own life. I to get it off and get yourself a bit of interview on one thing or another with the housing manager. See how your chances are. Send off tomorrow. Of course I want you. What do you do then? Bung yourself dressed envelope in it? Stamp address. Stamp address, yeah. That's what I said. All right, well, never mind. But that's the only way, Karen. You've got to really push it. Otherwise, you'll never get anything. No, you won't have a dog's chance in hell, otherwise. You've got to worry the day. Out of councils these days, if you want. Still nowhere. All right, but eventually I will. It will eventually. Don't get fed up with you. You've got to try these things, Karen. You don't want to stop here forever, do you? Mm -hmm. Well, then. Are, then. I don't want you here forever. You won't be like my sister, and I'll make sure of that. Because I don't want you hanging around here when I'm 70. And that's exactly what happens up there, isn't it? Mm. You know, She's spent nearly all her life at home. Yeah. Frightened to death to go down to the council. But she always says, isn't it, isn't she? What's my chances of getting a house? Why should I bother? Mm. But you've got to bother. Yeah, but it's when you go down there, all they give you is the same old bloody story, or only those over so many points get them. And that's always the same, no change. See, she's got 37 and a half points. The only way she can ever get any more points is to have more children. No, you and I mean, well, she can't have another child. Well, no, we know. Them, this, obviously, we know yeah, this. but then how is she ever going to get up in the bracket where they're giving them a house? It's damned hard, Margaret, when you've got to go and have a great big family of six or seven kids just to get a house. Well, of course it is, I but you try altering the system. It's a point system, right? Then you get people who come from another town, they go into bed and breakfast, Social Security pay for it, and eventually they found a house. Yeah. But, I mean, because she's living with us, she's, well, that's all right, she's with parents, so they're OK, you see, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they'll amble along. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And she's got no chance of getting any more points. I mean, if we kick her out, she still doesn't stand a chance of no, getting no, any no, more points. No, 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 they have to find rooms anyway. <laughs> no, but, I mean, we're, whatever happens, if we were to say, right, you've got a month to get out, that still doesn't give her any more points. No. No. I mean, she lives in a tent. Look at the people who they spotlight it in the papers. Yeah, it's living in Palmer Park. In, park. Tents or in, like in, a, in a car. But, I mean, it's, it's all wrong, you see. I mean, the old system was better. The longer you were on the housing list, the better it was. I mean, they should give their, the people who were born and bred in the town and who work in the town a fair chance. I mean, this is what gets up my back when I see people come out of come into the town. It's they cram themselves into one room with someone well, exactly. and get themselves a place before other people exactly. that have lived here all their life. And the only other way she can get a place is for her and Gary to split up. Yes, yes. I mean, why should a young couple split no, up? No, no. This, this is another way of doing it. I mean, it makes people dishonest. It makes me mad. While Karen has little faith in the system, Mrs Wilkins battles on. During the last general election, we filmed Margaret seeking promises as the contestants sought her vote. They've lived with us now since they were married. How long ago was that? Uh, be two years in August. Yeah. Now, the point is this. Why is it that people can come from another town, be kept by Social Security in bed and breakfast, and then get a house? Maybe a house that's used, going to be condemned, but eventually they are going to get a house. Whereas my daughter-in-law, Reading born and bred, and my son, are still going to be waiting. I mean, where are the priorities in this? How many people are there in the house altogether, then? Well, there's nine at the moment. Nine. 
Yeah. But, and, um, and how many rooms have you got? Six. That includes kitchen lounge and my daughter-in-law's room. And, um, and how many bedrooms? Three bedrooms. Three bedrooms. Yes. Well, I will get one of the councillors to come round and see you about this. Mm. Um, frankly, the situation in Reading is so difficult at the moment that I can't promise anything at all, well, obviously. No, fair but enough, we will have a look at it, and if anything can be done, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah. For building council houses has been restricted by the Conservative government to such an extent that when tenders come in to build the houses, councils are not allowed to accept the tenders, mm. and the whole thing has been made into a mockery, mm. which means that people like your daughter, son-in-law, are going to have to wait a long time until the next Labour government can pick mm. up the pieces and start again. That's, that's one thing. Yeah, but may I just make a point here? I mean, uh, I believe Reading Council is Labour held, is it? Yes. Now, under a Labour Council, there are people who come from other towns, mm -hmm. live in bed sitters, mm -hmm. uh, kept by Social Security, yet they get houses long before she does, and they're Reading born and bred. Now, do you think that's fair? Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Let's say, how do you do? How do you do? I've been your member of parliament yes. in Reading here yes. for the last three years. Oh, well. And uh, I'm the Conservative candidate this time. And I feel, you know, that we are entitled to a mm. place of our own. But the well, council now, just don't want to bother. I could be very critical and have been recently in the press about the administration in the local council. Mm. And after the election, we'll wait and see how things go. But if you've got a problem over that, this is one of the things you, you could get on to somebody like yeah. me. I have the advantage, you know, that I care very much about the community and, and families and how, how, you know, what future we offer our children. But also, of course, I can go to the man at the top. Mm. I know how to do this. Yeah, he yeah. can often look at things differently. Yeah, yeah. He comes here, he starts saying this, doing this, doing that. He promises all these houses what he's building up once he gets in. He's, no, been, he's yeah. been in three years now, what's he done? He hasn't done nothing. He spent all that money on that in our old dill shanks, what do you call it? What do you call it? The ski slope? Yeah. What was <laughs> that? It? You know, the ring road. What was it he said about the town hall? It's got marble on it. It's got marble. Yeah, marble. It's going to be marble, eh? Huh? What did he say it cost? 20 what? 23 million. 23 million on it, eh? Huh? I could spend that on housing. You could get what? Another three housing estates up? With that amount well, of money? Yeah. yeah. Easy. Yeah. You tell me one MP was kept his promise as soon as he'd got in. Once he's actually got in there, none of them. And then you see, I mean, an MP, let's face it, you say he could change all that. Quiet, Scott. An MP can change all that. He can't. He's just a figurehead. There must be thousands of people like Karen in that way for place and that. What do they do with them? If you've got a grievance, it's up to you to go and see them and worry them about it. Uh, well, like I say, though, all MPs are all the same. He's just the same. They make promises, promises. And what do they do? Once he gets the power, that's it. And he's turned around and say, <coughs> to the lot of you. <laughs> National housing figures show a drastic decline in the building of accommodation for rent. For Gary and Karen, a lifetime in one room seems inevitable. Oh, was it you that sat on it, was it? Yeah, move around a minute, Scott. Thank you. That's, Hang you on. can't fix it. I'm just, yeah, look, top it up, it stays level, doesn't it? There you are. A little bit of that. Don't push it, otherwise it goes in again. Good boy. Gary, what sort of cereals do you want, I asked you? I've had cereal for ages now. Well, I've got some puff wheat in there, and I've got a few wheat bits. Ah, well, then, well, then. What, what sort of meat do you want? Pardon? What sort of meat do you want? Do you want a bit of lamb? No, I don't. Um, I don't know. You know me, I can't tell the difference anyway. I'll put a lamb there. How about a cake? Victoria Sponge. Victoria Sponge? Yes. Get off. Good day. The driver's not here. Don't give me that cake now. I'm going to hit a mine. Don't ring down at Scott's. Ring down at Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm running. Well, I'm getting Scott's. Like thing that. is, hmm? I'm getting Scott's and beef burgers. Yeah, okay then. Any white chocolate? Yes, that is the lamb on how is the lamb. Oh, yeah. Is that white, is it? Yeah. Thank you. 
top. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Oh, I told you not to give I'll him give that. I'll give him a little bit. Gary, as a bus conductor, earns with overtime £33 a week. Karen tries to save a little, but by the next week's payday, her purse is empty. Wilkins, can you give me that? 31 out of 7 on Saturday. Yes, Saturday. Right, Wilkins, thank you very much. Good afternoon, sir. Good morning. Got my security call van waiting for my wages. Wilkins, G. G? Wilkins, G. T would be better, but... Oh, no, my pen. I haven't got a pen on board, have you, please, my pen? Or something. Oh, there's... Thank you. Mm. No pins. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, terribly sorry. Scott! Hello! What was it last week? 34.50? Yeah. 33.50 this week. Oh, sorry. I told you it wasn't so much overtime, was it? Oh, don't put that I ain't in there. I ain't got it on the floor. Cool, big deal. Got more for you. Stuff that in there or something. Put it in there. I'm going to carry rubbish about with me. Ask me how you want to see that. Do it. How much was tax? But just, what's the time? 7.30. Look! I know, 25 to my first trip. Where is it? Yeah. Hours pay. That's what you had. No. That's, that's the, the hours you work. 56. 30. 56. 30 bad, is it? What was it meant to be? 30? 30, 33, 50. 50. I've got you. Yeah, you have I'm off Sunday. Are you? You have 43, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 27, 8, 9, 30. 30 34, 30. I'll have the extra one then. 34? I'll have the extra one. 34? 33. <laughs> now, you said I'm going to have a drink when I come back. I want some money this afternoon, so. Hold on, plus hold quid that. For, That's mine. Plus a quid, which you'll get back tomorrow for when Hold that the minute. Oh, yeah. I'll get my machine a lot yet. I haven't caught an hour. Seven. Eight, that's mother's. Over there. Yeah, that's mother's. Hold on to mother's. I want mine, not mother's. That's yours next week. Yeah, well, give me a five, that'll do. Ah! Bug off. You have that and like it, and that. Oh, thank you. I'll give us all that back. All right, I'll see you tonight. What time will you be home? Hmm? What time will you be home? What time will I be home? It's about half past nine, right? Yeah, Come but you're going over the pub, aren't you? Uh, oh, I don't know. Eight, ten is then, all right? Ten, I'll pass. Between, but I'll say I'll pass ten. Who's that? So, tell me. Come on, I'll hurry up. Jesus, I'm late enough now. Right, now. Let me see what's in there. Bye-bye, Scott. Oh, Just kiss. There's a good boy. I'll Best go from there. That's some pie oh, now. Quick. Wait a minute. Just let them go. That's your boy. in there. Right then. Right? No, wait. Power and look, caught out, right. get on gear and All get right. over there. I know it's plenty of time, but. Get out! Ooh! Right. 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 I'll see you at half past ten. Alright. Bye bye, Scott. Give us another kiss. Go on. Oh, I love your sexy kisses. Stop it. You've been bad enough, Moo. I'll see you later, Moo. Bye bye. Cheerio, bye. Bye bye, Scott. Bye. When not working overtime, Gary's pleasures are few and cheap Sunday football and snooker at the company's social club. But I wish he'd stop just going in there, buying rolls every time he goes in, and spending two pences every five minutes to go and get his snooker. What's he supposed to do then? Starve all day? No! If he's been on the road for two hours jogging up and down on the arse end of a bus, he's entitled to a cup of coffee and a roll. You've got to give him some relaxation, haven't you? No, no, I don't mind him going in there, but not every day. Well, he doesn't go every he day. He well, he he goes that. every day. All right, so if he spends ten pence a day on five games of snooker, that's not expensive. If he was to go yeah. to pub, he'd probably yeah. spend about 30 bob. Whereas by just playing a game of snooker he like that... 30 bob, and what he drinks? 
All right, well, whatever he spends. This is small in comparison, isn't it? And it's a way of him relaxing. I mean, being on the road, you, you may not think it's difficult. But when they're, on, difficult. when they're on the road, with a, with a, whether it be conducting or driving, it's a strain. So therefore, it's a way to unwind. <laughs> you, yeah, you might not see it like that, but it's it is. on his tiny little legs. No, it's not <laughs> just on the legs, it's on the mind. Oh, I can't have it. hour in the canteen after every trip. No, well. <laughs> right, exactly. Now, you stop and think about it. Half past six in the morning till about one o'clock. He's entitled to something to eat. <coughs> Karen, you're getting tied up again. <laughs> I know. Exactly. <laughs> you wish you hadn't started now, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Good job we can laugh about it after, isn't it? <laughs> Otherwise we take her outside and thunder. Karen, have you cooked him a meal today? No. Well, then what's he going to eat? The dinner at work. Well, then he's going to want something. He didn't... All he had here was some puff wheat before he went out. Subsidised canteen meals for Gary help Karen with the housekeeping, but most of her money still goes on food. Beef burgers, cakes, tin potatoes. Well, oh, then if you were such a very good cook, why didn't you cook the dinner tonight? I'm just watching That's you. That's the point, isn't it? I'm just watching Tim? you. Yeah, so I'm a very better cook than what you oh. are. Oh. Yes, Lord. I'm just waiting if you make any mistakes, you see. You don't even know if I have made a mistake. How do you know if I've put sausages? Well, how can you make a mistake on frying sausages? Quite easy. You could see? burn them. You could. Go on. Talk to Tom then. <laughs> I don't have Yorkshire salmon. I oh, know you can't do it. I can do it, but I just can't. can't be bothered. I haven't got room in that pissing stupid little oven to do a bloody roast. Whoa. There is not enough room in that oven to get two roast dinners plus two Yorkshire puddings. Of course there is. There is not. If he had Yorkshire pudding, he'd not only would he be walking, he'd be riding about on the and bicycle the somewhere now. I know all the kids up our way now, some of the six months. Oh, give him the right food, he wouldn't be riding that cupboard. That'll teach her to keep away from it. You've done it again, didn't you? No, that's perfectly all right. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> See, it proves I'm right, isn't it? Mm. Proves you of any women are better cooks than what blokes are. Rubbish. Yes, they are. Tell you what, you two get thicker every day. Mother. What? Really Who's a better chef? <laughs> Who's a better cook, men or women? And you'd be honest, I'd never be trouble. <laughs> well, I'll be quite honest, I think they're both are pretty good because. Yeah, but women are better than men. No, not necessarily. Oh, Some are. of the best chefs are men. See? Well, this is what I've been telling In him. Restaurants, you men. Can. Yes, men. Yeah. Some men are better than women, but oh. most women are better than men. Oh, no. Yes, I am. Well, women should be better cooks than anyway, because you've oh, gone you all day. Oh, should be, but you're not. I said women should be, because you've, you're in all day. You so, have your half a pint of bloody water when you go over the pub for your boots. That's not water. Of course it is. That's made with water. Of mm -hmm. course it is. The doctor recommends you to have that. He tells you to have it. I have to get a prescription every In night your to case, the doctor told you not to have it. Not to have what? Booze. To cut down. He did not. Yes, he oh, did. That, that was about three years ago, that. Two. Two and a half. Two and a half years ago, that was. But it's still not make no difference. You've still got a chance of having that old back. I only have about three pints of urine on. Oh, Thomas. You lying sod. What? You had more than three pints in. You did. Hello, Scott. Good belly kiss, then. Very angry. Not really. Mm. Scott, 
Come on then. No. Gary? Cookie. Isn't cookie, women cookie. better cookies than men? Aunt, well, not isn't. Good, no. Not particularly. The best chefs in the in the world are men, isn't it? Well, I ain't you, Boone. <laughs> Sneeze, Scott. No, don't touch yeah. it, because it's hot. I was telling Tom, somebody on that bus pissed all over the top floor. Yeah, I heard you. What a stink. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And his driver still didn't turn it in. How about that, then? But the point is, the only way to get to see the housing manager is to keep writing. Right. Now, you're not satisfied. Take it up with your MP. Who's the MP then? Gerald Vaughan. Now go to him and say, right, now I want you to really fight on this issue for me and see if he's willing to take up what he said he'll do. So yes, if you get no satisfaction from the housing committee, then oh, write yeah. to him and or go and see him when he has one of his surgeries and say, right, now this is my problem. And tell him your problem. If necessary, if he wants to see me, I'll tell him my problem as well. Yeah. And between us, we ought to be able to do something about it. But, I mean, he said he's going to try and do something about the system. So, therefore, let him see if he's as good as his word. It's the only way to do it, is to just keep on and on and on and on. You've got to fight for what you want these days. It won't come to you. Post the letter. See what reply you get. I bet I can... I'll do that tomorrow morning, first right, thing. Right, but I bet you I can word the answer. No chance. The housing manager considers you don't have enough reason for him to give you a consultation or words to that effect at this present time. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, we did that today. And the mother's with a standardist envelope in it. Oh, you for a return? Yeah. Huh? You open for a return or something? Yeah. If you don't, I'll write again. What would you expect him to say when he returns? But, uh, no. Your case is being considered the same as he does to everyone else? I expect so. Posted it and that's it, isn't it? You two are going down to see me. Well, I will, but I don't know about Gary. Gary? Oh, look, now he's been done. Oh, yeah? Oh. Don't know. Depends. <coughs> While Gary is cynical, Karen remains hopeful. A week later and her faith is rewarded. The council reply. Karen and Gary still anxious about their housing.